Hey guys, what's going on? This is another Airsoft Dude One production. Today I'm going to be doing the loadout review and video of my TMC JPC with my KWA Mark 18 custom build. Now, the Mark 18 is mostly done besides a couple internal upgrades. Just need to get it shooting a little bit hotter, reshim the gears, and uh, that's pretty much it. I run an 11.1 volt LiPo in here. It's not with me, it's at a buddy's house. I've got a uh, AMP tactical uh, three times on a canti lever or a candy lever. Then I've got a GMP uh, aim point with the mesh lens cover on it. The front and rear sights are uh, PDW style. Uh, this needs to be removed to use the iron sight, the rear iron sight and there's no point in using it because it does not clear the sights. You have to remove the sights. I'm looking at getting a little bit larger sights so that I can't see them through the aim point. Now moving up I've got a uh, AMP Tactical 5 watt flashlight. I do have a glow stick because I played a night game recently. Moving back I've got a Classic Army Voltor stock with a pistol mag holder. I do have armors numbers on everything if you follow me on Instagram Bassman Cal Jr then um, you've seen me do some updates on this. I had a couple of my pictures posted on World Airsoft and uh, Airsoft International. Now moving across, I am going for a uh, PJ loadout here. So I do have first aid equipment in here such as gauze, band-aid, and a little roll of tape just in case I get separated from my plate carrier at any point. Um, I do have chrono tags on here. I did put red, uh, red and silver I did silver uh, numbering just because it doesn't stand out as much as blue for the um, armors numbers moving up I do have this on a one point I'm gonna be getting a blue force gear multi-cam one point so it doesn't hang so low or I'm gonna be getting the mag pull uh, mag pull rail mount for a sling so I can run a two point I do need to tighten the stock screw because this is a little wobbly, but I am going to disconnect this weapon from my body. Move on to the helmet. The helmet, I am, I do have my mesh tangled on top with my singer patch right there, my last name. Uh, my call sign tags are in the mail, and then inside here I do have anti-fog spray, which I just keep there if I can get it out anti-fog spray it stays in there just in case something fogs up um, my goggles I'm getting new goggles those are also in the mail I'm just using normal shooting glasses slash sunglasses they are ballistic so don't worry about that uh, I do have an extra pair of glasses these are the ones I actually use up here up on top I've got a uh, web net on there so I can attach you know mantis strobe all that nice stuff in there I do have the arc rails on this helmet this is the bump helmet so I can take my mesh off because I have it uh, up on top on the arc rail so it swings down if you saw my last loadout video the only real change is the JPC and how I'm running it uh, I'm going to remove the sling so it's easier to see the, this video is being shot with my contour so that's where it is I do have the safety retention lanyard right here for the contour um, also going to remove this so I can speak easier. Now on the front here, what you see is uh, starting off right here, I've got a single Condor uh, M4 mag pouch, single pouch kangaroo, got my 1911 mag there. Um, this uh, will be replaced with a Blue Force gear or TMC, um, what do you want to call it, the uh, pancake mag pouch so it slips in really easily now if you see this being wet it's because the plates are recently I filled the plates full of water so it does have some weight to it and it is the realistic weight behind it I am running the internal mag pouches as you can see here I have one two three one here one in the gun I run uh, five mags and I will be getting additional mag pouches to go on the back for teammates and said things like that now uh, I am running a used glow stick here just because I don't want to potentially crack one uh, when I'm not using it in game so I, uh, if the uh, 
game needs glow sticks, I'll put the glow stick there. This glow stick right here is a, um, you know, it's that whistle flashlight uh, green glow stick. So you've got a little mini flashlight, not very bright. Then it goes up to green and the flashlight, then it goes green, and then it strobes green. So, uh, you know, that's kind of just a little nifty thing. I'm not really going to have that once the kit is complete because um, I'm going to have uh, B lights. I am uh, getting B lights red and green for the back, starboard and port. Um, and then a red one is going to go on top so that if I'm playing a night game, I can just press that instead of getting a dead rag out. Now inside here in the internal, um, as you can see, the internal admin pouch, this is getting really hot because it is 109 today in California uh, with the cloud cover. Now I do have a three foot zip tie wrapped around in here just so I can do flex cuffs or anything like that. The uh, patch Kentucky windage, if you don't know what that is, then go look it up, AFJ ROTC, I'm an Air Force ROTC. In here, like I said, I am. I do have a um, speed loader which is empty at the moment. I run an extra 8.4 volt battery just in case my lipo and my extra 9.6 goes down in game. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Then I do have a multi tool right here that I can remove a Gerber uh, suspension multi tool. Now, moving over to my left side, I run two pistol pouches. I'm going to be getting Kydex inserts for 1911 mags so I don't have to use this anymore. It's kind of wobbly on here because the pouch isn't really designed to be ran on a JPC like this so I'm going to be getting new pouches so that it doesn't wobble and then the side plate stays kind of nice. I can still go streamline, profile, all that. Moving over, this little clip is for my mechanics gloves. Uh, that's where I clip them on in game or I can clip my helmet onto that. Now uh, moving over, I've, I've got a Thunderbee. Uh, you just rip the... Um, uh, rubber band and then I or I can just rip it out like that and throw it and then if I don't throw it at that point it's not armed so I don't have a uh, thing in there if I don't use it I can just put it in my pockets um, moving back this is my hydro tube and uh, the hydration system I'm gonna go over it briefly I'm not gonna go into it because I'm posting a hydration video uh, and how I run my hydration system because it's kind of different. Um, now the hydration system is a source style and then my uh, feed lip is right there so I can just bite the valve when needed um, and I can just cover it back up. Now here, like I said, this carabiner is what holds that. This is uh, also going through the carabiner just so it doesn't move too much. On the back I've got a rip away EMT slash IFAC um, it's kind of hard to access, that's why I'm getting a new pouch, getting the multicam IFAC, and this, like, like I said, it's a rip away, so I can take this off if I don't need it. Inside, you just pull that tab, and then uh, these come apart. Inside, what I have is my first aid kit just fell out. Um, this, a bandage, or a, uh, it's just a bandana, but you can use it to bandage something. Uh, you can use it to absorb blood, things like that. I, um... I am CPR certified and things like that. So uh, now I have the um, rope here so that I can do whatever. This is just backup rope. You know, it's paracord, so I can. It, it is weight holding, um, or I'm actually getting my CPR certification soon uh, through the Red Cross and all that. I have earplugs. I don't know why you need them, but whatever. This is my main first aid kit inside the first aid kit. I have Neosporin band-aids in a plastic bag so it can remain waterproof. I have a sealed sterilized gauze pack. Um, I have an ACE bandage. I have a CPR mouth-to-mouth -mouth kit so that you don't have to actually put your lips on theirs. I do have compression bandages. Um, and you might be thinking that's way too much for Airsoft, but I keep it on my plate carrier always if it's not in my bottom pocket. Now, then I do have a snake bite kit because some places where I play there, I have seen snakes. I have been around snakes and all like that. Uh, you know, you can use bee stings, all that kind of stuff for this um, uh, pack. And this is a very nice confined first aid kit. It's what you need. It's not too much. It doesn't weigh too much. But it is enough that could potentially save someone's life or prolong it until 
uh, certified EMTs or EMS arrives on scene or whatever. Um, now moving to the back panel, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I'm facing away from the camera and you won't be able to hear me. But what I have is I have one Thunderbee which is not accessible to myself, which was uh, on there just like this one with a rubber band. Now the, uh, the Thunderbee is also not armed, but it, the the spoon is held down by the rubber band. So if the pull or and normally I wrap black tape around the spoon, so even if the pin is pulled, it is not live until I remove that. I always wear a um, a paracord bracelet just because extra rope, things like that. My G-Shock is in the mail. Um, that's just my normal going to be a wear watch, but my, I'm ordering the G-Shock. On the back, I have a tactical assault gear back pack. Kinda, it's a small pack, uh, which is a 50-ounce hydration bladder holder so that, as you can see, my tube runs along here instead of over the shoulder pad, so it comes up right to my mouth. Now, that's what I'm running my hydros out of. Now, on the back here, I have two Motorola Talkabouts. Until I get better communication setups, I'm going to be getting a PRC-152, and uh, that's going to be running in an embitter. Uh, and, or, well, I'm going to get the, the cover so that I can still use this radio because it works just fine for my needs. Uh, it's a, it's a one-pin, and I am getting contact twos to run on my helmet. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be getting them on the uh, arc rail mounts or not. I'm not sure because I do have my mesh hanging from that. So that's how I run that. Multi, like I said, multicam IFACs in the mail. Uh, new goggles are in the mail. Hopefully I'll be getting Oakley soon. Um, I don't really want to spend that much money on them, but they are nice and I have used them before. Uh, G-Shock's in the mail. I will be getting banger pouches so my uh, Thunderbees just clip on and off. Um, the Kydex ones, so you can just take them right off vertically, um, in, or horizontally instead of vertically, you know, out the top. So I don't have to use that. Also, a cat tourniquet will be replacing this patch. Um, so I'm going to have my cat, or, or no, my cat's not going there. My cat's going vertically right here, and um, that pouch will stay. Uh, I'm still kind of trying to think over what I'm doing because I'm trying to run a Air Force PJ loadout. Even though I do have a dust-off patch, I'm going to be getting the uh, patch so others may live. And yes, I am running a Tokyo Marine 1911 on a drop leg Serpa mount, so I, I, my gear is cleared. I can run it on a belt, but I don't like the belt. Or I'm not sure right now just because of different ways I'm running my gear. I'm just trying to see how I like it. Either way, I'm using a Serpa or a Kydex. And uh, on the back, also, I, like I said, I've got the two radios. That reasoning is right now because I do have a little you know push the talk button that comes up over here but it's not working right now so that's why I'm ordering the headset uh, I have two just because I will be able to run two different channels um, I know that's the point of a PRC so you can run different things uh, but I have two so I can run two different channels so I can communicate with two separate teams at one time or two fire fire teams or squads or whatever uh, so this is my brief Air Force PJ loadout the beginning of it uh, like I said, I am running TMC uh, replica medium size sappy plates inside here. Um, now a little just overview. And uh, there will be more to come. This should end up looking really nice, I believe. It's going to be the cross between a PJ loadout and a an, uh, Navy SEAL loadout. I'm not sure what pistol I'm going to run. I'm thinking about getting a Sig Sauer P226 and uh, running that on the belt. But I'm not sure at the moment, just because, like I said, I'm running over different things. I, I do have the molly mount for the, the Serpa. I have the molly mount, the belt mount, and the, um, the uh, drop leg. So I can run it here, here, or here. So depending on what the situation is and all that. And this is still fairly lightweight. The vest only weighs 30 pounds each plate weighs eight pounds full of water and uh, they are waterproofed off so I, I, it the water that you see dripping or on me or whatever is just from residue that's on the outside of the plate when I put it inside now thanks for watching guys check out my Facebook page for more updates once I get more likes then more updates will be soon to come I have been getting a lot more views recently and a lot more subscriptions keep that going guys thanks a lot this has been another airsoft do on production I'm out